true story of a gal by the name of Krista. She grew up in a small cherry farm in Traverse City, Michigan. She was a crazy wild child. She dismissed her parents as being old fashioned because of her tattoos and her piercings. And she was just kind of, she's kind of a rebel. One night, Krista and her parents got to a massive fight. I mean, it was a yelling and screaming and kind of a drag out fight. At the end of it, she slammed her door to her room and she said, I hate you. Then she went out and acted on a plan that she'd been thinking about and rehearsing for many, many, many months. She ran away, grabbed a bag, she just took off. It stiked her way to Detroit. Within a few hours of arriving in Detroit, she met a man who seemed really nice. He drove the most expensive car she'd ever seen and he was willing to take her in. This nice man taught her a few things that would make her very valuable on the streets. And because Krista was young, she brought in top dollar for her services. As time went on, she got a little older. This really nice man realized she wasn't bringing in top dollar anymore and he threw her back out on the street with no money and a drug habit to support. got nowhere to go, no money, no place to live. She started thinking back about those sunny spring days when she'd just be lying underneath the cherry trees at home, realizing that renting her body on the streets of Detroit was no way to live. She, she made a decision. She was going to head north. She was going to move to Canada. She was going to start over. And on her way north, she just thought, you know, maybe she tried something that she thought had absolutely no, I, no chance of actually working. She mustered up enough courage to give her parents a call. Can you imagine? Just, it's ringing, it's ringing, it's ringing. No one answered. She left a message. She said, you know what? I'm going to be passing through Traverse City on a bus stop. We're going to make my way to Canada. I'm going to start a new life. If you want to see me, I'm gonna be at the bus station around midnight. After hanging up, she thought, what am I doing? You know, they're not gonna show up. That was stupid. There's no way. But the message had been left. And now she had to figure out what to do next. bus is headed north. She could see the signs that Traverse City was getting closer, this many miles, this many miles. She started to run through like the scenarios. What's going to happen whenever the bus finally stops? Nobody's going to be there to meet her. She'll just get out, get something to drink, get some restroom and just take off again and that'll be it. Maybe there'll be one person, maybe a family friend or maybe even a member of her family to be there to be like, how could you have done this? Look at what you've done to shame her and to make her feel bad. Finally, she's rehearsing all these things in her mind. The bus makes it to Traverse City. It arrives. She heard the bus driver say, 15 minutes, 15 minutes at this stop. 
When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. And you have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. And you have been so, so kind. All her mental rehearsing could never have prepared her for what she found when she stepped off that bus. At midnight in the small town home, in the small town bus depot, she walked outside and found dozens and dozens of familiar faces belonging to aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents, and they were all wearing the silly party hats. And a huge banner, banner was hanging from the wall and it said, Welcome home, Krista. Welcome home. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. Well, needless to say, she was a little overwhelmed by that response. And seeing all these people and recognizing and remembering and family and friends. Her dad breaks through the crowd, runs up to her, and as she's trying to get the words out to explain herself, he just wraps his arms around her, making it clear that all he really cared about was his daughter had finally come home. And all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love all it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99, and I could learn, and I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away, all the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. Overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. It chases you down, doesn't it? He never gives up on you. Never. You might give up on yourself and you might think, well, I've just totally blown it. There's no way. He never gives up on you. He never gives up on anyone. There are people in your life and in my life who could kind of be like Krista in the story, the true story of Krista, that they just feel like they've totally blown it. There's no way they can come back from whatever decision or whatever moment or whatever season of life. There's just no coming back. And so they're just going to live in obscurity. And Jesus is like, no, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to find a Matthew. It's to come alongside somebody, put your arm next to him and say, hey, come with me and let's meet this guy together. His name's Jesus and he, he's got something to say to you.